So the focus for this recording is to look at the representation of Beyonce as a mainstream star. So Beyonce herself is probably the world's biggest female star and her net worth is around um, 500 million uh, US dollars. Um, but how has she been able to accumulate this? How has she been able to become successful and maintain her popularity? We're going to explore that throughout this recording. Now, an, a, an essential thing to understand when we look at the music industry is this concept of star persona. So star persona is the way audiences and fans understand particular music artists. A star persona is very much like a brand for a product. So we don't always remember even the, the music they sort of uh, perform or create, but we do tend to remember things about them. They stand for certain things, for certain themes, certain values that we start to associate with particular music stars. Before we get going on that and look at that in a bit more detail, we need to know something about the music industry. So a very quick uh, understanding of that can be gained by thinking about the concept of the record industry majors. So basically the record industry is dominated by three major companies. These are Sony, Warner Music Group and Universal Music Group. They dominate the music industry so much that of all the music artists that are signed to any particular record label or record company, 85% of them belong to one of these three. Now, when you get an, um, a small group of companies that dominate an industry, this is known as an oligopoly. And that's a term worth mentioning and worth remembering. Of course, Beyonce is signed to somebody called Columbia Records and they are owned by Sony. So Columbia Records are owned directly by Sony. Uh, so we might see the logo for Columbia Records and think, oh, well, they're, they just uh, exist on their own. They don't, they belong to those, uh, that big company. And that's the way, really, the record industry works, that you've got a lot of smaller labels that we sort of recognise and they belong to one of these, or you, most of them belong to one of these big record industry majors. Let's look at an example. And just to summarise those key points that are really, really important, that um, star persona is something um, that is used to market music artists in the music industry. And the music industry is dominated by three record industry majors, Sony, Warner Music Group, Universal Music Group. These form what is called an oligopoly and that's where you get a small number of companies dominating an industry. And 85% of all artists that are signed to a label belong to one of these three record industry majors. And of course, more specifically looking at uh, Beyonce, she is signed to a label called Columbia Records, but that is owned by Sony. And sometimes it's a bit confusing when we see these names of record labels, uh, because it isn't always obvious that they belong to a bigger uh, sort of company, but this is the nature of the uh, music biz business. So, for example, if we look at Sony, um, and we can start to understand all the different labels that they actually own. And if we look at the Sony music uh, labels, um, we can do this just by going to the, the website so they don't hide this away if you look for them. Um, and click onto labels and publishing and if you just scroll down you might recognize some of those names um, that are associated with particular music artists but this is typical of what the record industry majors do they take over and then own individual labels okay now um, on page 31 in your book if you want to have a look at um, researching some of this yourself, but for uh, Warner Music Group and then for Universal Music Group, and then continue with this uh, recording.
So if we look at Universal mu Music Group uh, and just link in with the uh, labels, and again, uh, scrolling through these, there are many names, some of which you might recognise to be associated with particular artists. And artists will be signed to these labels. Ultimately, that means they are owned by the big organisation, which is, is, in this case, Universal Music Group. And the third um, record industry major that we're going to look at is Warner Music Group. Uh, and again, they are typical of what happens with the record industry majors. And if we have a look at their recorded music, we will recognise a whole load of different labels, such as Atlantic or Assignment Records or uh, whatever it may be. And artists will be signed to these, but if they do that, that means they are actually owned by Warner Music Group. Um, and this is typical of what the record industry majors do. They take over smaller labels, they own smaller labels, usually buy them out, and they become what is known as horizontally integrated companies. And horizontal integration is where you own media companies in the same area of the media. So just to emphasize that in a little bit more detail, again, we're back on Sony, so all these uh, labels such as RCA and Arista and Legacy and Columbia and so on all belong to Sony but a company that owns uh, other companies in the same uh, area of the media, the same media businesses are called horizontally integrated companies. So this is an example of horizontal integration uh, and I can say when a company owns businesses, businesses in the same area of the media. Please try and remember that if you can. OK, so the three record industry majors, now these are commercial organisations and the way they, the reason they exist is not really to make interesting creative music that people, you know, sort of um, are inspired by, but they exist to actually make money. So they are commercial organisations, they want to sell music to audiences because that makes money for them and it's not really about the creative aspect it's about the need to make money now in order to do that what these companies need are stars so stars music artists becoming stars are the things that sell music to audiences to understand this in more detail we've got to consider the concept of star persona so star persona is really important the center of a music artist is this concept of star persona and this is a form of marketing so marketing music artists to audiences and the star persona sort of becomes a brand so a brand is something that we understand and we associate certain values with it certain ideas certain concepts with it so for example liam gallagher um, is known for a lot of other things other than his music. In fact, can we even remember one of his own uh, solo records? I'd be hard pressed to do that. But we do remember he's a Mancunian who sports Manchester City. Um, he uh, is a bit sweary. Um, he, he's got a brother that he doesn't get on with. So these are all things, these are all bits of information that we've been given in order to keep him and his star persona within our minds. So we know him, we feel we know him, we know things about him and it makes him more memorable. Uh, well, more memorable than perhaps his music does as well. So consider that. What do we know about music stars? These are the things star persona is based on. Star persona is a brand that we start to identify um, um, music artists through. Okay, now um, what we're going to do now is just think about Beyonce and star persona. So Beyonce has a career that spans a long, long time in the music industry. And as we looked at previously, she's the biggest music star, biggest, sorry, female music star, I would say. Um, and um, how she been able to do that. So what's happened with her star persona? So to last 20 years is an achievement in the music industry. Now what Star Persona has to do is to constantly evolve and change over time. So the shelf life or the life of a music artist is usually about two 
uh, years. So to last longer than that, what you've got to do is do this concept of evolution. You've got to evolve, you've got to change. And you start to think of different things that are associated with that particular music artist. So how has Beyonce done it? So we'll have a look at uh, some of um, the key points. Okay, so um, 2002, um, she's in a girl group called Vesemir's Child, so Survivor, we have a look at that video. We can see there's concepts that come through, things that we start to associate her with. One could be the objectified female, where she seems to be sexually desirable to a heterosexual audience. And that's something that seems to continue throughout her star persona. But we also see her as a dancer and a performer. So we know those things about her. How does this evolve? That's the question. OK, so a year later, she become a solo artist. And uh, we see this video here, um, Crazy in Love. And there's, there's other things that we you know, are given in terms of understanding her as a music artist. However, um, some of the things are built on us already, and one of those things, the objectified female, so we're reminded of that. She can still be objectified, seen as a sexually desirable um, uh, object for a um, heterosexual male audience, if you like. But there's all sorts of other things in this video as well. These are just some of them. So we're reminded of, you know, sort of her, um, where she's come from. Uh, so from the hood, dancing with her you know, friends who sort of look quite similar to her um, because of the things they're wearing. Uh, she's also Jay-Z's girl, so we see that in this video, we're reminded of that. And we see her as also a fashionista, a fa fashion model. So we've got all these things that have been added to her star persona. But how does this continue? So the music video Irreplaceable from 2006, so we're moving on. Um, how does she evolve her star persona? What else do we understand about her? But of course, uh, we are reminded of some of her previous star persona, so we still see her as the objectified female wearing um, limited sort of clothing. Uh, but in this video, she's seen as the owner of a big sort of expensive house with expensive furniture in. Uh, and there's other sort of objects of wealth, such as a car and things like that. And she's making a uh, man leave the house. She is in control. She's seen uh, to be powerful. She's seen to be the decision maker. And she's also seen to be wealthy. She's the one with the power within this. And that's part of her star persona as well. In addition to this, towards the end of the video, we see her playing in a girl band. It's all girls. She's seen as an independent female. No need for a man. And that sort of independence, if you think of things like single ladies as well, uh, is something that's that's built on as part of her star persona and helps her to evolve. OK, uh, if I were a boy as well, now this one from uh, a year or so, um, I think it's 2008 this, um, we see her evolve again. But again, you know, it's building on the concepts of the objectified female. So she's seen in her underwear to remind us of that part of her star persona. But in this video, she acts as a police officer and part of this is sort of spoken and it's acted scenes. And we see her as an actor, not just as a singer, a dancer, a performer, but also an actor. So she's building her star persona more. She's able to do more and more as she evolves her star persona to, to keep her relevant and interesting for her audience. Formation is another part of the evolution, even though we're jumping on a number of years. And it's quite interesting formation in what she's doing in it, because with formation, she is seeming to seize to sort of reclaim and, and celebrate her uh, ethnicity, her, her African-American heritage. But she hasn't always done this. This hasn't always been the case with Beyonce. So we can see the um, cover for her second album here that um, again, going back to 2008, where she's seen um, criticised for this whitening effect that she uses. Uh, she's got blonde hair, uh, the light she's got on appears to sort of lighten her skin. And this is sort of moving away from that sort of, um, you know, sort of e e ethnicity and identity she's got through her, her African-American heritage. So she hasn't always done that. So 
she does come back to this within formation but why does she do that how does that evolve her persona and the release of formation was really interesting in itself um, and it was an example of what we call guerrilla marketing now guerrilla marketing is where you take people by surprise and nobody's expecting anything uh, to happen um, so um, Beyonce was due to perform at the American Super Bowl uh, 2016 of course the um, year of release of formation also the album um, this it was part of and um, she hadn't announced that she was going to release any new material and at the hard time show she started to um, perform formation uh, and um, of course as you can imagine without any um, uh, you know advanced warning of this this created a lot of sort of interest and a lot of uh, sort of traffic on social media of course was um, part of a visual album called Lemonade um, and after the half time show um, or during the half time show there was a, an advertising break within the advertising break uh, Beyonce announced a world tour so that was a paid for advert just after the uh, um, after she performed this that world tour became a sellout out where she made um, thousands upon thousands of dollars from it so uh, and because of the content of formation the video reference to the black panthers to malcolm x um, and uh, african american identity and history it caused a lot of uh, discussion on social media and drew a lot of attention so it can be seen to be a highly effective example of marketing so how does this work with the concept of star persona how does formation work with the concepts of star persona so we do have um, reinforcement of her existing star persona where she's seen as an empowered independent female and again this image perhaps if we have a look at that and compare it to some of the other understands we've got a Beyonce she's seen in front of this house this antebellum house but instead of being um, a slave or in the background she's prominent she's seen at the front of the house and she's seen in front of the males uh, in front of the house as well so suggests she's got uh, she's in control she's a powerful female her wealth and status is emphasized through the uh, jewelry she's got around her neck and around her wrists and also the fact that she's wearing a hat as well this would be uh, a sign of a uh, of status within, within antebellum times of course in the days of antebellum slaves weren't supposed to wear hats they wore sort of headscarves and things like that so this is a sign of status so we've got this concept of the empowered independent female 
In addition to that, we've still got Beyonce as an objectified female uh, wearing revealing clothing with her body on display, with the shape of her body on display um, at a number of points within this video. So again, we can say, well, that's reinforcing her existing star persona. How is it different? How is she changing her star persona and evolving her star persona? Within this video, uh, there's lo a lot of reference to African-American sort of culture and heritage. So here we see a lot of emphasis on hair mm. with Beyonce hanging out of this car with her braided hair, of course. The central image being in a, um, uh, a wig shop. Um, and um, the bottom image, of course, we've got the um, man with this sort of afro as well. So using hair as an identification point for African-American identity is a way in which she is involving and associating herself with her uh, heritage. What happened at the New Orleans? <laughs> okay, so you've just heard uh, a sample that was used at the beginning of the formation video. And it's a, a sample from a YouTuber called uh, Messi Meyer, who is a popular YouTuber. And he talked a lot about uh, African-American culture uh, and music. Uh, he was also a rapper as well. Um, and he was tragically uh, killed, uh, being shot dead, leaving his girlfriend's house back in 2010. Remember, this uh, formation video is 2016. Now, Beyonce and her record company decided to use this right at the beginning of uh, the video. But why? did they do that? So this is where we've got this concept of the intertextual reference. An intertextual reference uses parts of another media text in order to give meaning to a text in question. So Formation is using this in order to give meaning to itself as a text, as a music video text. Perhaps Beyonce and her record company were thinking, well, this is showing awareness of what's happening in African-American communities uh, by using uh, a reference to a popular YouTuber uh, back in 2010. So it could be her sort of making a statement saying, look, I know what's going on. I know what the world is like that will give her more relevance and more credence with her audience. And there are many intertextual references within this video. And uh, another one, another key um, intertextual reference um, in order to understand this you will need to watch a documentary that was popular on YouTube uh, called that BEAT and it's about bounce music um, from quite um, an obscure uh, minority sort of uh, culture within New Orleans uh, and it was gay rappers uh, were using sort of bounce music uh, and this is what the documentary is uh, around and what you should do is watch that documentary and then try to note the references in it. The, all these images here uh, have been taken from that documentary. And again, there was no permission um, requested for this. They just used them. They just drew on uh, sort of uh, this image. But why was this used? What was it about? Um, again, you could argue that Beyonce and a record company in doing this is saying, look, we have knowledge of what's happening in largely African-American communities, we know what's happening with um, music. We know about underground music movements. So it's, it's saying that Beyonce is, is perhaps relevant to an audience and knows what's happening in the world. And again, this develops and helps evolve her star persona. Oh yeah, I, oh, oh yes, I like that. I do not come. And you've also heard um, a sample from um, a musician and drag artist called Big Afridia uh, that was included in Formation as well. And again, why was this used? Um, Big Afridia um, sort of talks a lot about um, LGBT uh, issues, um, is African American, um, and again, perhaps is this. Beyonce saying, I am relevant, I know what's happening uh, in the world, I know what's going on. 
So again, this intertextual reference is part of the text that is the Formation music video. And we're wrapping up here now with the summary, the key things that you need to take from this. And you need to really revise these and know these things and be able to use these words and, and, and think about um, this information. So um, the music industry is dominated by three record industry majors who are Sony, Warner Music Group, Universal Music Group. They dominate these companies dominate uh, the world of music uh, and form what's called an oligopoly. 85% uh, of signed music artists are signed to one of these three record industry majors. Beyonce, of course, is signed to Columbia Records, who are owned by Sony. But that's typical because, um, of course, all the record industry majors, the three, the big three, are horizontally integrated. It means that they own record labels um, and it, you are horizontally integrated if you own businesses in the same area as of the media. And again, summarising the concept of the star, and this starts with the concept of the star persona. So the marketing of music stars is done by building a star persona and getting an audience to understand and engage with a star persona. Beyonce is a really good example of this because her career is about, you know, 20 years uh, in duration and she's maintained her popularity and remained relevant to audiences, not by staying the same as she was right at the beginning of her career, but by evolving her star persona. She's changed. She, there's different things that are associated with her now. So this evolution of star persona is absolutely critical to making an artist successful. Um, you could argue that um, in the formation video, then she is sharing awareness of um, a knowledge of uh, her cultural heritage as an African American, and um, also knowledge of you know sort of political struggle through uh, organisations organisations such as Black Lives Matter, and uh, this evolves her to perhaps show her as being politically aware, and once you know, a campaign and she's, she knows what's going on. Um, and she's not always done this. So this is uh, an evolution of her style persona. However, you could take an, uh, an alternative view and just say, well, cynically, you could say, well, she's just using this to maintain her popularity and, um, you know, gain commercial benefit. Of course, uh, Formation was first um, performed at the halftime show of the Super Bowl, watched by millions and millions of people in America and throughout the world. Uh, after the halftime show, there was a, an advertising break in which she was advertising a world tour. Again, this was unannounced. It was guerrilla marketing. That world tour was sold out, and uh, she she benefited to the tune of uh, millions of dollars because of that world tour. So is she just using this as a way of you know, gaining popularity and making more money. That's what it means by commercial benefit. So that's it. Um, know all these terms, be able to talk about these things, and then we are making real, real progress. Thank you.